thank you for today we ask that um, you heal us of our sins and you keep us as far from temptation in Jesus name Amen God bless you today for flow revival we are going to be looking at the art of hearing the art of hearing and its tagline is following the voice of God the art of hearing following the voice of God Amen so we are going to look at chapter 1 8 areas of your life which must be open unto the voice of God now the Lord has been speaking to you countless times time without number just that you are unable to hear him and to you know you are unable to hear him you are unable to um, listen to him Amen. so um, the voice of God is important for every area of your life if there is anything that is important to you I would suggest that you open that area to the direction of God's Spirit you may think that God is not interested in certain areas of your life and I want you to know today that God has something to say about every aspect of your life the Lord is depict, depicted as a shepherd to his sheep sheep are animals that are very dependent on human beings for everything and if the Lord is depicted as a shepherd it shows how dependent we are on him for everything so the first point is one depend the voice of God for your needs and this is taken from Psalm 23 verse 1 a psalm of David the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want now I shall not want is what you say after you have followed the shepherd for some time you'll be able to say with David I have no need I am blessed in every way in order to experience this you must follow the leading of the Spirit now the Lord is telling us the book is telling us the art of hearing by the human mills is telling us that it's the voice of God is important some aspects of your life that you think may not matter to God that is the most important aspect of your life amen so it's very important unto the it's very important to God and his other people amen now it also says in Psalm 23 verse 1 that the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want Hallelujah. Amen. 
So in this verse, which is um, a psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You start to notice that once you start to follow your shepherd very much, you say, I'm blessed. I don't need anything much, you know. So you need this um, you have to depend on the voice of God for your needs if you don't depend on the voice of God for your needs you always be wanting and you even forget that you serve a living God amen so yeah um, number two depend on the Holy Spirit for your marriage and home depend on the Holy Spirit for your marriage and your home 23 verse 2 says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters amen so he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters now green pastures speaks of peace and happiness he speaks of the marriages that we all desire and you will never have true happiness unless you marry the person God wants you to marry. And if you allow him, the Holy Spirit will lead you to a peaceful marriage. Okay, so let me um, explain on this a bit. So this is simply defining that... Um, this is simply defining that green pasture speaks of peace and marriage. And you have to allow God to do what he wants to do. For example, you will never have the happiness that you need you never have the happiness that you need or that you want if you marry the wrong person that God has not sent you to marry maybe you are, you are marrying someone else the Lord wants you to marry this person so you have to marry that person amen you have to marry that person that the Lord has given you if you marry a different person like the book is saying you will never have happiness you can be with um, this girlfriend you see that when you are with her you are happy but when you go to another person you see that there's not much happiness there's not much communication between you and the person amen so you will never have true happiness so depend on the Holy Spirit for your needs amen once you depend on the Holy Spirit for your needs, I tell you that you have a wonderful and happy marriage. Amen. Number three, depend on the voice of God for the right church. Depend on the voice of God for the right church. It says, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now this scripture shows how dependent you are for God's guidance for righteous living. Many people end up as fruitless non-entities in the kingdom of God because they are under the wrong leadership. It makes all the difference. It makes it is so important to be led by the Spirit when you are choosing a church. It makes all the difference in the world. Most definitely, this is one of the important areas where you need the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you a little bit about churches that I've been to before I stopped here. Now, you know. I and my mom we used to go to churches a lot we didn't change frequently but we used to go to two churches amen so um, we first went to Christian priest and she left for some sort of reason then we we're also going to Faith Army Chapel, but for some reason, she hasn't been there for a while. And then I was getting tired of staying home. 
because I wanted to visit the church. So then I found my aunt, Samantha Metal. She's a shepherd in KFC Brampton. And she was going to KFC and I said, okay, I want to join you there. I went and it was a very glorious service with Reverend Larry Apiakora. And to be honest, from that day, I don't know what happened. I just started joining the flu. You know, during the time that I joined, that was the time that, um, you know, flow was going on for eight hours and all that it was going on and on you know and it was i felt that it was too long for me amen i felt that it was too long for me so i couldn't join the flow but one of the flow events that i really liked was flow revival whenever i see flow revival i'm so excited amen I'm so excited because I always get to hear the beautiful songs written by our father, Bishop Dahiwad Mills. So it is a very nice thing to be in this church. However, the Bible is that the so as you can see from the story that I've told you is the Holy Spirit that led me to this church. And the Holy Spirit that led me to start up this church. Amen. So we must depend on the voice of God for the right church. You may walk into this church, you don't feel happy. That's why Bishop Dan says that when we are giving offering and it's not from your heart, you don't want to give, don't give. And if you want, if you don't want to give to move to another church where you are content with giving, where you are happy to give, because it won't force you to give. If you give, give. If you won't give to, that's your business amen so he's a very straight up person no long talk if you give give it if you're not to just leave it for other people to come and give amen because there are millions of people in the world that are happy to give to his church there are also millions who are happy to give to their churches as well amen so you must depend on the voice of god for the right church Number three, um, sorry, number four, depend on the voice of God for divine protection. Depend on the voice of God for divine protection. Now, we are going to read Psalm 23 verse 4 and it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. Now, the psalmist made it clear that he was dependent. The psalmist made it clear that he was dependent on the shepherd for protection. And he explained how the lord's protection was so powerful that he was able to eat lunch when his enemy was nearby listening to the news it is almost as though travelers are playing russian roulette russian roulette is a game involving the firing of a revolver with one chamber loaded at one's head after spinning the chamber if you are the unlucky one the bullets will be fired when you pull the trigger it is almost as though it is a game of chance for you to travel and return safely. Definitely, you need the voice of God to choose the right car, bus, plane, or train. Amen. So, this verse is telling us that we should not fear because we should trust the Lord. He, you have to be dependent on the guidance and the protection not the protect the divine protection of the lord amen you must be dependent on the divine protection of the lord the psalmist may declare that he was very dependent and he was able to do something while his enemy was nearby he says i will fear no evil 
I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, and thy rock and thy staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me amen so we must depend on the voice of God for divine protection as it will guide us in whatever we do amen the next one is Five. Number five is depending on the voice, depend on the voice of God for the anointing. Depend on the voice of God for the anointing. And this is being taken from Psalm 23, verse 5. And it states, Thou preparest a table before me. Be in the presence of my enemies, and thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Now, without being directed by the Lord. You will never be anointed. The anointing will come from heaven per se. God will have to direct you to relate with anointed men of God. Jesus told his disciples, "Follow me and I will make follow me and I will make you." Without following the right person, you will not amount to much in the ministry. Surely you depend on the voice of God to lead you. Amen. So it says, Thou anointest my head with oil. So this is actually relating to those in the ministry. It's relating to them in a way because, um, you know, uh, It says here that you have to depend on the Lord for the anointing. If you think the anointing is going to come by your prayer, you are deceiving yourself because the anointing thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Amen. So the anointing comes from depending on the Lord. That he will anoint you. You must depend on him. He is there for you to be depending on. Amen. Number six. Depend on the Lord. Sorry. Depend on the voice of God for the good things of this life. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. So that's usually the grace for some of the churches around. But we use a different grace. Amen. So every businessman must know this reality. Without the grace of God, you will never make it to the top. The silver and the gold belong to the Lord. If you see his face, he will show you where it is hidden. And that is where the verse Haggai 2 verse 8 comes in. It says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Now that is the only part we need. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. So, these things 
Hallelujah. Sorry for that. Um, so, number seven, depend on the voice of God for to make it to heaven. Depend on the voice of God to make it to heaven. And this comes from Psalm 23 verse 6. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And do you want to dwell in the house of the Lord forever? I would. And as you follow the Spirit of God, He will lead you on the path of righteousness. This will eventually lead to heaven. You need the shepherd to take you from the green pastures all the way to those eternal gates amen so let me elaborate a little bit on this um you are supposed to depend on god who is the shepherd for the path to lead you to in the path of righteousness amen so as he leads you you tend to see that many things are changing in your life amen number eight depend on the voice of god to fulfill your ministry and this comes from psalm 23 verse 3 and it says he leaded me in the paths of righteousness. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. So and you are alive on this earth to fulfill your ministry and this is why god created and saved you and if you do not fulfill your ministry you have missed your whole purpose for this life now this is targeting to those in ministry including myself and others and it's saying that you are alive to fulfill your ministry and if you do not fulfill it, you tend to lose purpose for your life. Amen. You tend to lose a purpose for your life. Hallelujah. Is someone being blessed today by the word? Um, today is a very beautiful day and I decided that we should Steady the art of hearing, and we're gonna look at um, chapter 2. How to um, we're gonna be looking at chapter 2, which is how to avoid losing your gift, how to avoid using losing your gift. Sorry. So how to avoid losing your gift and I think it's something that most people need it's something that most people need to know because many have lost their gift but they are unable to identify that they have lost their gifts in the ministry so um, let us reflect on some of the points and we look at the chapter 2 so it's the we are going to reflect from number 6 it says depend on the voice of God for the good things in life now nothing good comes without dependence amen so you must depend on it you shouldn't have this type of thinking that oh it's never going to happen i mean 
me of all people you see that sort of thing amen so it happens to most people i even used to do that i would say oh me of all people i mean will it ever happen can i get this thing you see amen so um we're gonna look at chapter two it says how to avoid losing your gift now studying the voice of god can be a little frightening especially when you think of the consequences that can befall you when you do not obey his voice in this chapter i want to share with you why every christian or minister minister should obey the voice of god years ago says prophet i noticed this scripture for though i preach the gospel i have nothing to glory of for necessity sorry um first corinthians 9 verse 16 it says for though i preach the gospel i have nothing to glory of for necessity is laid upon me yea woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel now paul was someone who felt he would get into all sorts of trouble if he did not preach the gospel and he was not wrong indeed i think i can say with for woe is unto me if i preach not the gospel and every minister who does not take the leading of the spirit seriously will open to himself all sorts of dangerous attacks he will be in danger of losing the anointing a minister must obey the voice of god to have the gift taken away from him or her um and this is taken from luke 19 verse 24 and it states that and he said unto them that stood by take from him the pound and give it to him that had 10 pounds amen dear man of god dear woman of god do not Think that you are indispensable if you do not if you do not do what god wants you to do your ministry will be taken away from you and given to another read it for yourself take him from the pound if god gives you a pound he can take it back when he wants to pastors seem to enjoy hiding behind um romans 11 29 romans 11 29 which states clearly that for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance because of this verse they think that God will never take away their anointing but that cannot be the case what this scripture means is that God does not change his mind about you he never changes his decision to call you or to use you and he never changes his decision to anoint you if God has called you to be a vessel, you will always be a vessel. The story of the prophet Jonah is a good example of how God does not change his mind about the people he wants to use. Jonah did not go, did not want to go where the Lord had sent him. He wanted to be a nice guy everybody liked. Now the word of God came unto Jonah the son of of Atonai Amitai, sorry, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee from the Tashish, from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish so he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto the Tarshish from the presence of the Lord this word called Tarshish it will make me flip my tongue 
anyway but the lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken amen the ship was like to be broken so however when the season of grace is over that's what people call the grace period when the season of grace is over god will have no choice but to recall his pound he may have to give this pound to another minister hoping that one will be faithful will you write this book i remember a man of god says the prophet who to whom the lord spoke to about writing a book the lord asked him will you write this book he says yes of course i will and the lord says i hope so because you have the fifth person i asked if you do not write it i'll move on to the sixth person dear friend in this story you see two principles working together on one hand god does not change his mind about writing the book on the other god is forced to select someone else and give him the job yes i believe that god does not change his mind about us but i know that god can recall his pound and give it to another and this is taken from the same luke 19 verse 24 and it says and he said unto them that stood by take him from the pound and give it to him that had ten pounds amen so keep the gift of god by obeying his call keep the gift of god by doing what by obeying his call be sensitive to his voice and do what he tells you to do and you will succeed in ministry do what is hard and difficult rather than what is nice and easy anything anything that you try to do can be difficult but it's not impossible let me tell you that anything that you try to do can be difficult yes but it is not impossible for you to do so do everything that the lord has told you to do be it be it that you are in ministry be it that you are called to save people be it that the lord has brought you into his presence to call and to save people from the vengeance on that day in the mighty name of jesus christ father thank you for today as we have heard your word and we hope that it may manifest in you it may manifest in us and keep us till we come to a meeting like this again in jesus mighty name amen god bless you